Hey guys, I decided to remake the Wispy Smoke tutorial because the first time around something happened with the audio and it became out of sync with the video and as the video played on the problem progressively got worse. So instead of going back and trying to fix the first one, I'm just going to remake this one. So the effect that we're going to be creating here is a wispy type of smoke. And this is the type of smoke that you would see coming from the end of a lit cigarette or a pipe or something of that nature. This really isn't the kind of smoke that you would want to use for an explosion or some type of thick billowing smoke. This is going to be more of a soft, wispy type of smoke. So to get started, we need to create an object that's going to be used for the emitter. So in this case, I'm going to use a sphere. And I'm going to make it editable and we'll go over into point mode because we're going to need to select some points in order to use for the point emitter. Now years ago, back around the days of R8 and R9, Maxon had a point emitter preset in the content browser. And what that point emitter allowed you to do was select certain points of an object or all the points if you wanted to and you could use those points to emit particles. Now with the release of R10 Maxon got rid of the point emitter and replaced it with the surface emitter. Fortunately for us, the surface emitter has different functions and one of those functions is point mode. So we need to go to the content browser and we need to go to our emitter list and we need to go down to surface emitter and double click that and that will add one to our scene. So here are the attributes for the surface emitter and the first thing I want to do is grab the sphere and drop that down into the polygon surface and then for the source we want to change that from polygon to point if we leave it at polygon what's going to happen is that this emitter is going to start emitting particles from the very center of each polygon of the sphere and I would rather use points in this case so we're going to change that to point and I'm going to change the type here from rate to count and I'm going to take the particle number up considerably so I'm going to take it up to maybe a thousand and if we hit play okay there's our particles being emitted from the sphere from all the points but that's way too many right now and I only want to select a few points to use for this so we're going to go into point mode select the sphere I'm going to grab my live selection tool and I'm going to go to the bottom here and I'm just going to select perhaps maybe five or six points so I'm gonna select that one that one and maybe two on each side okay so something like that I think that will look pretty good and now we want to make a set selection so we're going to use the set selection command that's going to give us a point selection tag and if you don't have yours docked like I do you can get to it by going to selection set selection okay so we have our point selection tag so now what we need to do is go back to the emitter and drag that selection tag down to the selection link box and now we can get out of point mode and we can go back and hit play and now you can see only particles are being emitted from that set selection of points so I'm going to extend my timeline to about 300 frames that way it'll give me a little more time to watch the playback because 90 frames is a little too short. Okay, one more thing I also want to do before we go any further is to go back to the surface emitter and I want to take the speed value here from 200 down to 0. And when we do that, if you hit play, let's go back to get rid of those stray particles, we'll hit play and you can see that it doesn't look like it's emitting anything but trust me it is there's just no speed to these particles but it is still emitting and to prove this to you if you hit play and we take the object that's being the emitter in this case a sphere and drag it around if we hit play and then move the sphere you can see that it is emitting particles there's just no speed to any of them okay so we need to hide the sphere from being seen from the viewport and the 
render. And what we want to do now is set up a visible light because the whole point behind this is using visible lights to fake the smoke. Now you could use pyro cluster if you wanted to. That's definitely another option. But it's going to take a little more time and effort to make pyro cluster look right in order to mimic the same effect that we're going to be getting from the lights. Uh, also, the visible lights are going to render a whole lot faster than pyro cluster. So we need to create a omni light. And in the general tab, I'm just going to make this a little bit of a light gray color. So maybe something like that. And for the visible light, we'll turn that to visible. I'm going to enable no illumination and deselect diffuse and specular. So if we hit render, there is our visible light, but that is way too big. So we need to go over to the visibility tab and the inner distance I'm going to take to a value of 5 and for the outer distance I'm going to take to a value of maybe 120. Okay so that looks better but it's still too bright so there is a brightness setting here as well and I'm going to take that down to roughly maybe something like 6 and we'll render that out again and it's barely there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but it is there and that's actually the result that I want because the more of these particles that are going to be grouped together, the brighter it's going to be. So we want to make sure that this brightness setting is down low. Okay, so now what we want to do is place this light on each particle that is being emitted. And in order to do that, we have to use particle geometry. Now anytime you want to uh, place a shader like pyro cluster or anything like that or any type of geometry or in this case a light on top of your particles you have to use particle geometry that's Cinema 4D's way of applying some type of shading or geometry to a particle so if you're using R12 you need to go up to the simulation or the simulation drop down menu at the top but in my case I'm using 11.5 so we're gonna go to objects thinking particles particle geometry and we need to go back to the surface emitter and we need to take our light and drag that down into the shape link box and then we can make our light a child of the particle geometry and we can hit play now and you can see some have popped up so we just need to move the position here of the sphere and now if we render now we're beginning to get this really cool looking smoke trail Alright, so that's how you do the smoke as far as uh, setting up the emitter and everything like that. But in this case, we want to make wispy smoke. So what we need to do is jump into some thinking particles and a little espresso in order to get these particles to start moving in a fashion that looks like smoke. So what we need to do is go over here and or double click on the espresso tag and I'm going to go down here to a corner where I can have some room and we want to start introducing some thinking particle nodes into here but before we do anytime you want to introduce some type of dynamic thinking particle setup you have to pass your particles through a p-pass node before you can pass them along to the thinking particle nodes so we need to go create a new node thinking particles tp initiator p-pass and now we can create some thinking particle nodes. So for right now, I want to create a dynamic node. And it's going to be the P wind. And we're going to be using wind to fake this smoke. So I'm going to create one, and then I'm going to control click and drag down to duplicate it. And you'll notice that inside of these wind nodes, it says none. And the reason for this is because it's expecting us to have some type of object in our object manager or in our scene that's going to be acting as the wind. So what we need to do is go back to the viewport and we need to make a null object and we're going to control click and drag down to duplicate it. I'm going to name the first one small turbulence and the second one large turbulence. Okay, so we'll go back to the Espresso, and for the first P wind node, that's going to be the large turbulence. So I'm going to take that large turbulence null and drag that into this first wind null, or this node. Then I'm going to take the small 
null and drag that into the second P win node. Okay, so we can hook these up now. And I'll go back to the view and I'm going to take this large null and I'm going to position that down here and then I'm going to take the small one and position that one up here. Now you notice that these nulls have now become square splines with an arrow that's pointing in the direction that the wind is going to be blowing. Now in this case, I don't want the wind to be blowing in a Z direction. I want it to be blowing up. So what we got to do is select both of these nulls and go into the coordinates and I'm just going to pitch both of these up plus 90 degrees. Now that way the wind will be blowing upward. So we'll go back to Expresso and we're going to click on this first large wind node and I want to take the strength of this up to a thousand. And then I also want to come down here to the turbulence and I want to take that up to a thousand as well and for the structure size I'm going to take that to a thousand and for the frequency I'll take to maybe a value of 0.5. So we'll go back and I'm going to hit play and let's see what happens here. Okay so now we're starting to get our upward smoke but it's going way too fast and there's just not enough to it so what we need to do is introduce some more thinking particle nodes into the scene so the first one I want to use is P friction to slow this stuff down so let's go to the thinking particle nodes and I want the P dynamic P friction so we'll connect that one up and the friction I want to take to 2 and the spin friction I'm going to take to a value of maybe 0.25 so we'll go back we'll try it again okay so it did slow down a little bit so we'll go back and I also want to introduce a P scale node so we need to go to the thinking particles TP standard P scale and we'll connect that one up and for the variation I'm going to change to about 15 percent and the Y scale I'm going to take up to 120 and I'm going to activate this over age feature and then I'm going to play around a little bit with the slider so this white slider over here I'm going to pull that back and for this slider on the left I'm going to make that a light shade of gray okay so let's go back to the wind nodes the first one here that looks pretty good let's go to the small turbulent wind node for the strength I'm gonna set that to zero the decay I'm gonna set to 50 the turbulence I'm gonna take to a thousand and the frequency will take to 0.5 uh, let's go back to the first one which was the large null here or the large uh, turbulent null and the decay I'm gonna take up maybe to a value of maybe something like 15 maybe so we'll go back to the view again and let's tr try this out and see what happens okay so now we're starting to get a really nice wispy type of smoke here you can see it's beginning to look more like smoke rather than just a, a straight up and down line and that actually looks pretty good so the only thing I think I'd like to do here is go over to the surface emitter and change the particle count and take it up maybe another thousand to a value of two thousand and that actually looks pretty good okay so here is our little wispy smoke type of effect which looks pretty good to me So now what we want to do since we've got all of this set up is we want to create an area in which these particles can stay active and if they go outside of that area then those particles will be killed off. That way we don't have any unnecessary calculation that has to happen in the viewport because if your camera is mainly going to be focused on an area say within this area here and you've got a bunch of stray particles that are way up here that the camera is never going to see then that's just going to create a lot of unwanted calculation for your viewport and it's only going to slow things down. So uh, if any of you have ever used RealFlow, RealFlow has a demon called the volume demon. 
and what this does is it allows you to uh, kill off any stray particles that may go outside of the area that the volume demon takes up and you can also invert it that way uh, any particles that come inside will be killed off but in this case we want to keep everything within the zone uh, active and anything that goes outside of its radius will be killed off so a good thing to use uh, for something like this would be a simple sphere so I'm gonna take the sphere and I'm gonna take the radius up to maybe 3000 and of course we want to hide this from the viewport and the render as well okay so now we want to give the sphere an espresso tag because we're going to need to do some espresso as well as thinking particle work here in order to tell thinking particles to kill these particles off if they go beyond the radius of the sphere so I'm going to call this sphere kill zone might as well and we'll right click on it and go to espresso and we want to take that kill zone sphere and bring it in and we want to enable two output ports so the first one is going to be coordinates global position and the second one is going to be the radius because we're going to have to use the radius of the sphere to determine when these particles are going to be killed off so we need to go to object properties radius okay so since we're dealing with thinking particles again and we're trying to control them we're going to have to introduce another p-pass node so we need to go to thinking particles initiator p-pass and what we want to do now is we want to get a p get data node and the reason for this is because it has the ability to get position information from each particle so what we want to do is go back and get a thinking particle helper p get data and we need to expand it because we need to enable the output port for position okay now we're also going to get the p die node so we'll go to new node thinking particles and we want to go to p uh, tp standard p die we'll drag this over here to the right and we need to expand it also because we need to enable the input port for on okay so let's connect a couple of these up so we'll go from the p-pass to the particle and then we'll take the p-pass over to the particle on the p-die node okay so now we need to calculate the distance and we need to use a distance node and we're also going to need to use the compare node which is a logic node and that's going to tell the particles to be killed off if they go beyond the radius because the compare node has the function greater than so let's first create a espresso calculate distance and then we want to go get another node which is going to be logic compare okay so let's connect the position to the first input of the distance and then the global position of the kill zone sphere to the second input then we're going to connect the distance output to the first input of the compare and then the radius from the kill zone over to the second input and then output that over to the on for the p die node so basically what we've done here is we've taken the position data and we're calculating its distance by the global position of the kill zone sphere and then we're outputting that distance and we're comparing it to the radius of the kill zone sphere and then we need to set the function of the compare node to greater than and if it is greater than if this distance is greater than the radius because the compare node compares input 1 to input 2 so in this case if the information coming into input 1 is greater than the radius of input 2 then this will output a value of 1 which will be greater than and it will turn the p die node on and it will only kill the particles if they go beyond the radius of the sphere so let's go back to the view and if I hit play now those particles should start to die off once they reach the top of the sphere and there they go you can see that they are dying off that they're not going any higher than what you see right there alright so there is the wispy smoke tutorial 
And of course, if you want to change this, perhaps you don't want your smoke to go that high, all you have to do is click on your kill zone sphere and just change the radius. That's basically all there is to it. And uh, just to show you, you can take this value down to something like 2000 and then go back and play again. And now those particles will only go uh, as high as that uh, radius of your sphere is. See, now they're being killed off. Alright, so uh, one more thing. Uh, in the video that I originally uploaded showing the smoke moving around, all I did was I animated the position of the sphere. So all you have to do is just animate your sphere like that. And there's your smoke. Alright guys, so thanks for watching this tutorial on the Wispy Smoke. And uh, hopefully I'll have some more tutorials coming later, perhaps even maybe a match moving tutorial and even some After Effects tutorials as well.